Hello again and welcome to Pearl Magazine. Many city folks prefer living conveniently close to work, schools and medical care. But for some, living in rural areas offers something special despite the long commute. Reporter Alice Khan went to visit some remote villages in Chateau Kok to meet those who prefer a rustic life. Lo Wei, a 300-year-old Hakka-walled village in Chateau Kok in the Northeast New Territories. In its heyday, there were about 200 households in the village. But in the 1960s and 70s, many villagers moved out and some emigrated to the UK for work. Mark Sung is one of them. Now in his 50s, Mark is the only person living in this deserted village. His family moved to Scotland when he was a few years old. He returned to Hong Kong in the 1980s, hoping to find his roots. I believe uh, my ancestors were from here. And I was just curious to know what uh, my personal history was. So um, one day I, I just um, got a train and a bus and co connected and found the, the bus that took, took us to uh, Lok Gang, where I got off. And, and so I just walked along the coastline, the shoreline, and, uh, until I reached a village. I saw these uh, ladies dressed in black, which is what my grandmother did. They asked me who my parents were, and I told them. And they said, oh, okay, you're, this is your village. You have a house here. So I followed her and uh, the Hakka lady, and uh, she showed me the house. I just had this strong sense of coming home. Mark ended up going to New Zealand and Hawaii to work as an actor. In 2000, he decided to resettle in Hong Kong. He worked as a cameraman for various TV stations, so he bought a small flat in Chung Kwan O. But Mark didn't like the hustle and bustle of the city, so he quit his job and sold his flat. In 2007, he returned to this village and has been living here for 16 years now. I live here, yes. This is home. Well, but why did you live in their ruin? Well, I'm just, uh, for, peop for other people, it's, it's a ruin. But for me, this is more like my community, my home. This, to me, was like an oasis from all the troubles in the world. Mark prefers the Hakka-style house to these small city flats. I prefer this roof to all the other roofs. It's Hakka, Hakka style. It has an open uh, area. In the, you walk through the front door and there's an open area and the rain and, and the elements came in and it allowed the uh, flow of air. He makes use of the landscape to make movies. I just have to walk out the door and I can see uh, a forest and the hills at the back, and the ridge, ridges over there, and the valley, and the lots and lots of trees. Creativity comes from nature. This is such a beautiful environment. But living a rural life wasn't easy for him at first. Mark could only get water from this 100-year-old well in the beginning. So he built his own water system for daily use and for farming. You can see it's a, a banana grove, which I began as, uh, from one single root, which I got from Cambodia. And because we have lots of wild cattle here, I, uh, I, I collected a lot of manure, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that plus water, which I uh, got from the reservoir, the re village reservoir from up the hill, and uh, piped it down to here. I uh, repaired all the water pipes, and uh, it was a um, Herculean uh, task uh, in itself. He manages to sell his organic bananas at a good price. You adopt an ecolivic, right? I guess you can call it that, yes. I learned about uh, what it's like to have organic food and um, uh, plant, plant, uh, grow vegetables without chemicals and, and so on, and uh, just generally uh, avoid uh, highly processed uh, food and, uh, um, and not uh, waste um, um, oil and, and gas and petrol. Recently, he's found an alternative source of protein. These uh, insects, which I, I thought were, were a nuisance, they were damaging my bananas. It just, in fact, they, were, they could be a source of food. 
Mark tries to gather some grubs for his meal. As you can see, the shell from the chrysalis is still here. But it would have been a, a beautiful um, fat little uh, grub about that size. And I would have uh, used a bit of butter and, and fried it and eaten it. <laughs> He says living in a remote village may limit his friend circle, but he still believes this lifestyle fits him. Yip Hu Man is a painter and writer. Back in 2019, she moved to a faraway village, Moit Lam in the Sha Tao Kok area. Currently, the easiest way to access Moit Lam is to take an hour and a half's boat ride from Ma Lu Shu to Lai Chi Wo and then a 30-minute hike. Another option is a two-hour walk from Wu Kao Tang. Hu Man took a boat and walked up to Moit Lam this morning. This is the most difficult part because the slope is so steep and every time I come up to Moit Chi Lam, I got all sweat. Wutse Lam is surrounded by dense woodland. The scenery is beautiful and love the uh, peaceful there. We want to hide in a quiet place. So Wutse Lam is a good chance for me to um, do, my, do my work. This 300-year-old Hakka village was abandoned in the 1970s. Uh, everywhere uh, were the ruins and it is a deserted village that no one lives here and it is no phone signals there is water supply but uh, all the water is from the mountain and have electricity but everywhere is um, uh, without uh, street night so it will be dark and um, at night in 2019, Hong Kong University launched a Mu Tzu Lam art revitalization project. Hu Man was invited as a resident artist to paint murals on the facades of old houses. Bird is one of my favorite animals. And then why I paint the birds? It is because the villagers always mention this big bird. <laughs> and then when I paint the big birds, I see another smaller one. And then I take the photos uh, for them and then uh, add them uh, on the wall. This one is because the name of Muji Lam is uh, meaning uh, uh, the plum grove. Therefore, uh, I think the flowers of plum and also the fruit of plum. Hu Man spent two weeks on this bird mural. Hu Man enjoys living in this remote mountain. One night when I am uh, having a torch here and then I find uh, there is a um, uh, fruit here and it is called a ficus tree and then mm. I saw a civic cat is uh, picking the fruit and then eating his dinner. Wow. <laughs> it get me so excited. I remember the moments so that um, I throw it in the wall. Apart from the animals, she also paints fruit, such as gooseberry, star fruit, and lychees. Although she lives alone in this village, her artwork drew the attention of hikers. It even became a backdrop for a local romance movie. I feel happy and surprised. One of the rewards, it is a good opportunity to promote and uh, a rural area in Hong Kong. After finishing the mural, Hu Man rented a house in Lai Chi Wo, which is also remote. Currently, about 10 people live in this Hakka village. The rent is only a few thousand dollars, much cheaper than a flat in the city. She is now writing books on plants. She finds an ancient plant near her house. It's called Bai Lai. In English, it is a uh, creeping fig. Uh, in Chinese literature, um, there is a, a story about that. And the ancient poet, um, a poem uh, called San Guai, it means the mountain ghost. Um, and the ghost, uh, the clothes of the ghost is decorated by this kind of plants. This feng shui forest is her favorite place for painting. She rented this 7,000 square foot farmland to grow plants. Wow, these flowers. It's so beautiful. 
yeah, it's beautiful. And this is some kind of eatable flowers. Yeah, What's this the one, this the name of this plant is Xi Sao, Ji Sao, Xi Sao. And the leaves have some fragrant smell, mm -hmm. and you can um, use it as uh, tea leaves as well. Mm -hmm. What's that? Oh, it is uh, called Ai Cho, that is uh, an ingredient for a uh, Hakka charcoal. <laughs> yeah, there are so many lemon trees here, and the fruit is growing bigger and bigger. Does farming give you any inspiration in your creative work? Yes, um, because farming, I can know the Life, the life cycle of the plants to, so that it is good for, um, for me to, uh, 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 to write a book about um, plants. I can paint some or draw some illustration um, uh, for them. I love watercolors because I think it is perfect match with those plants. Hu Man puts flowers on the cookies and she makes tea with the herbs. She says these products sell very well in the market. When we return, East meets West in medicine in Hong Kong. Stay with us. Welcome back to Pearl Magazine. Traditional Chinese medicine has a more than 3,000-year-old history. By the 1600s, the traditional Chinese medicine academic system had been relatively established in China. And by the 1950s, a research institute, as well as colleges and universities, were established. Here in Hong Kong, it's part of the medical system, but many non-locals still don't fully understand it. I spoke with practitioners and academics to find out more. Cupping therapy is used in Chinese medicine to relieve pain by stretching the muscles. The cups are attached to the skin tightly, so it can make to stretch the muscles and dilate the blood vessels. Traditional Chinese medicine, or TCM, looks at a person's symptoms and treats them as they relate to the rest of the body. Our Chinese medicine focuses the whole body more than the disease itself. Such as cough, we do not focus on the symptoms only because we have deeper to the root reason. It's connected to the lung or maybe even spleen. In other words, we do not only heal the disease, we also improve the immunity at the same time so the disease will not come back again easily. The philosophy is based on keeping the body's energies balanced, in which yin represents the negative, often described as water or cold, while yang is the positive, often described as heat or fire. The theory is that by looking at the symptoms and how they're connected, you can restore the body's balance rather than just the obvious issue that has manifested as a cold cough or pain. For example, if the fire is more than the water, there are two situations. One is light, uh, the water is in the normal level, but the fire is more. So we use the Chinese medicine to reduce the fire to keep the balance. The other situation is the fire is in the normal level, but the water is less. In Chinese medicine, there are many ways to treat a patient from using herbal remedies, cupping, massage, diet, and acupuncture, to name a few. TCM practitioner Daisy Wu often uses acupuncture for pain and other chronic issues. TCM believes the flow of energy in one's body, described as the qi, flows along the body's pathways or meridians, and that needles inserted into specific points can help rebalance the body by removing pain or other symptoms. So if someone has insomnia, where would you do acupuncture? The yin pan, uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, that's um, between our eyeballs in the middle. Mm -hmm. Even some patients sleep immediately. <laughs> During my treatment, but yes, I need to wake up. <laughs> Wake up learn, yes, to remove the needles. You got headache, sometimes we do not get the points here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like, 
far away because we need to find a new reason. She says that since COVID, she has seen a rise in those seeking TCM therapies. The group of clinics Wu works at has seen double-digit growth in TCM patients between 2021 and 2022. How many herbs are there when it comes to Chinese medicine? Well, uh, we have some 300 to 400 commonly used uh, Chinese herbal medicine in clinical practice. But of course, in Chinese medicine practice, uh, we have uh, almost 10,000 different herbs. Professor Lin Ji Xu is the director of the School of Chinese Medicine at the Chinese University of Hong Kong, or CUHK. Their university is one of three in Hong Kong that offers a degree in Chinese medicine. They began taking students in 1999. We have had about 1,500 uh, graduates already. Uh, among them, uh, about uh, 400 actually come out from our Bachelor of Chinese Medicine program. This year is the 25th anniversary of the establishment of the school. He says they only accept 25 students each year, the quota set by the University Grants Council or UGC. Actually, we want to admit more students, but unfortunately the quota is that. Uh, while it's at the same time, we do uh, see a great deal of in, uh, increment for our Master of Chinese Medicine program. He says they've seen an average 5 to 10 percent increase in applications for the master's program. For our academic staff, we need to conduct a lot of research. Only through research, we can establish uh, clinical evidence on the, the effectiveness and also the safety of Chinese medicine treatment uh, on common uh, diseases. We also have uh, lab-based research activities. He says their school is the smallest of the 19 within CUHK's Faculty of Medicine. So this is our pharmacy. So, so this is one piece of a Chinese herb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is called uh, Zimu, uh, Zimu, uh, And oh. what's it for? This is actually for heat clearing uh, purpose. The pharmacy has three versions of Chinese herbs. These are called decoction herbs. So basically, you get this herb and uh, you take it home and you boil it with water. Normally, we take um, about two hours to prepare the herbal uh, decoction. For those without two hours to spare or the space for the herbs, there is the option of granulated herbs, which can simply be mixed with hot water and drank. If you go uh, to other places for holiday, for work, you can always take this with you. Yes. So you don't need to uh, carry the big bag of uh, dry herbs. And if you don't want to bother with mixing it with water, you can get it already boiled in liquid form. I think about 10% of our patients actually use this service. And about 60% of our patients actually use the granules. And remaining 30%, they probably they take the herb home and the boy for themselves. How does a patient get two different diagnoses from a Western doctor and a Chinese medicine doctor for these uh, herniated discs? OK, once you see herniated discs, then they look at the same thing, that the spine is impinging on the spinal cord. Mm -hmm. and, and also down below, can, you can probably see that the nerves are also compressed. So Western medicine would say correlate it if this is really causing a lot of problems, like pain or a future more problems to the spine, mm -hmm. then surgery. Chinese medicine would try to do it the other, look at it the other way, to ease off the muscle tension by many things, then hopefully, the alignment would shift it back to its normal alignment with acupuncture and cupping and on herbs too. Then the muscle become strengthened and the easing off become easier. And while you can do that, then the impingement and the and shifting can be long lasting.
Dr. Edwin Yu is one of the few doctors practicing both Western and Chinese medicine in Hong Kong. He has been practicing since the 70s and founded the Hong Kong Association for Integration of Chinese Western Medicine in 2001. Dr. Yu says that while Western medicine is strong at diagnostics, surgery and treating acute conditions such as heart issues, Chinese medicine is good at treating the other factors that might have led up to the incident and may still remain after surgery or other treatment, particularly chronic issues. But once you come to the body, the body is in terms of health. The Chinese medicine doesn't look at minor problems. Once you've got multi-causal or multi-causality, it means a lot of problems. Then Western medicine still have a lot of ways to go, but Chinese medicine would excel a lot in that. He describes the body's health as its body state. Traditional Chinese medicine looks at how the body reacts to the environment and lifestyle. In this way, Chinese medicine is also preventative. How do you sleep? Do you feel tired? The daily stuff add up. The tongue, the eyes. Actually, Chinese medicine is not looking at health, just as if it's only daily life. Whatever. Life is the body, and body have problems. They look at the problems. He says he looks at his patients from both angles to come up with treatments. He explains that while a heart might need surgery, using Chinese medicine to make the body state feel better also means that the heart pumps better and vice versa. Combining the two practices into a clinical framework of four areas is what he suggests. The first area is local focal problems, as if you have a fracture, a strain, then the second thing is the general whole body. Western medicine look at it like diabetes, like toxic problems, like you, you, you have a reaction, a skin reaction. Then the next thing is the body state, like in Chinese medicine, they call it constitution or syndrome diagnosis. Then the last thing is connective tissue problems, the fascia problems, the skeletal muscular problems, all those things. So medicine is medicine. You can't say, I, I, I only practice one. According to the World Health Organization, 103 member states have given approval to practice acupuncture and moxibustion, with 18 approving these for coverage in health insurance. I think Hong Kong is a very, very useful place, an important place to excel in Chinese and Western medicine integrated together. In the West already doing integrated medicine, Western medicine or Chinese medicine. I think they are not as necessarily as good if Hong Kong really do it. That's our show for this week. Join us on Pearl Magazine, same time next week. Bye for now.